Welcome Mesa Church. This is Judy coming from Houston, Texas. We're here just finished celebrating Thanksgiving with all our family. I'm so joyful. I'm so overwhelmed that we were all together. That doesn't happen too often. I'm glad I'm here with my daughter Selena. We've been inseparable this whole time. We've had a really good time and I'm just so grateful that families are together. Families are restored and this is a time together that families need to stick together during this COVID time been hard but I think that we realize how much we need our families and how much we love our families and we just need to get together and put old things away and start new with your families and I just love God and I just want to uh, say a scripture for today it says I will praise you Lord with all my heart I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done I will be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your name, almost I am overjoyed. This is my daughter, Selena. She's gonna introduce the music, so here she is. Hi everyone at Mesa Church. This is Selena, um, Josh's sister and Judy's daughter. So um, we're here today just um, recording just to tell you guys um, how much we love you over here in Houston. We have some special um, music today by my husband, Chris Sanchez, Michael Tyler, Caleb Cole, all from Lindell Church. Um, and we hope that you, it's anointed music and we hope that you guys enjoy it and that you guys are able to enter into God's presence this morning. And we also, if you want to give online, even though we're not in church, you want to give, just there's going to be a link in the comments. So you can go to that link and just press it and to give online. And we just appreciate everybody that gives and keeps this ministry going. And right now I'm going to let my daughter Selena pray for the, for the service and for the offering. Okay, let's come to court God today. Lord God, we just thank you for just giving us this opportunity to worship and to come into your presence and hear the word of God this morning. I pray, God, that you would just give us a wonderful time in your word, and God, that you would speak to us. Even though this service is online, Lord God, you are still present, present in our homes, and I just pray, God, that you would just uh, anoint Josh as he speaks to, to your children, Lord God, and that you would, Lord God, just, just have, us, have us have a wonderful day in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
just kept getting this uh, this mental image of of the Lord Jesus Christ just being robed and clothed in glory. It just felt like God was just reminding me of how awesome He is. And as we begin to sing, uh, I trust you, God, I trust you, I really felt the presence of the Lord come stronger. So I just want to sing that again from, from my heart. church what's up we are out here just in the middle of houston texas i just picked a random spot i wanted to preach from location show you guys what we're working with um so i love you guys i miss you guys um i hope you guys are having a great thanksgiving weekend everything's going good i hope black friday wasn't too crazy but you got everything you needed um if you guys wondering i wear a size extra large um size 13 shoes um i like snapbacks amen I'm just playing. I hope you guys got all your shopping done. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. Let's just open up in a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, so much, Lord, for everything that you're doing, everything that you've done, Lord God, every every way that you have moved, Lord God. We, we know that you have called us to restoration in this season. You have called us to forgiveness in this season. You have called us to repentance in this season, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing, everything you have done, everything you're going to do, Lord God. You are such an amazing person. So we thank you. You are greater. You are our Jehovah Jireh, our provider, everything we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're just having a wonderful time over here in Houston, Texas. Once again, it might be a little loud because of traffic. I hope you guys hear me okay. Amen. But we're just out here having a blast. It was such an honor um, this Thanksgiving because we got to 
We got a fellowship with my whole family. I had Gabe here, Gino here, Selena here, um, Dre here, all my brothers here, all my sisters here, all the in-laws, all the nieces, all the nephews. It's so rare that as we've grown up that we've actually got to all spend time together. So I, I just know I can see my mom and dad's heart as they have all nine of their grandkids here in one roof, in one city. It's just been such a blessing. And, and I think about restoration in our family because we've been through some hard times we've been through some struggles we've been through some fights amen we've been through some times when we didn't have a lot of money we've been through some times when we were depressed we've been through some times when when things didn't look that good i know um like when i was in jail and all that crazy stuff happened it put a, a hindrance to our family's relationship but how many know the glue that kept us together was prayer and that prayer only came from jesus christ because he was always the center of our life and i look at my family i think it's so awesome because everyone serves in church i see my nieces i see my nephews just singing to God and, and worshiping God. And I see how generational curses have been broken in our family. And it all starts with prayer. And God is saying, in this season, restoration is happening for families. And I believe that with the COVID and with the pandemic and the things that have been going on, that God is saying, this is a time for restoration where we don't focus only on negative things, but we get to reconsolidate our family and be thankful. Amen. I'm so excited for today. Today's my message is called a call for restoration. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful this season for everything that God has done in my life, everything that he's done in my heart, everything that he has set me free from. And, and I believe that restoration starts with us as the body of Christ. It starts with us as believers, because if, if God could forgive me for all my sins, how, how much more should we forgive others? As I think about some family drama in the Bible, I think about Joseph, which is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Joseph was, was the youngest brother until Benjamin was born, amen? He was the youngest brother. He was spoiled. He was loved. He had a coat of many colors. And God gave him these dreams that one day all his older brothers would bow before him. And, and, and that all... That, that, that he had this great dream and this great purpose in his life and that made his brothers angry. So angry in fact, they beat him literally almost to death. They threw him in a pit and they were gonna leave him for death when instead one of the brothers said, you know what, let's just sell him into slavery. At least we'll make some money if he's a slave. If he's dead to us, he ain't no good to us, amen. A lot of us think of our family like that. If they're dead to us, who cares? We wanna at least make some money off them, right? So Joseph ended up in this crazy story, got sold into slavery. He ended up um, getting accused of rape. I mean, he, get, he ended up getting thrown in jail. He ended up getting having this hard life. But throughout this hard life, he kept his faith in Jesus Christ. And he said, I don't know, wherever I'm going, wherever I've been, as long as God is with me, then I'm okay. So I, I believe that Joseph is an example in, in, in our life of how to go through some trials and trust God to get you out the other side. Joseph never thought it was his brothers that threw him in the pit. He also said it was all part of God's plan. As we look further in the story, Joseph started interpreting some dreams for the king while he was in jail. Amen. How many know if you are a steward of what God has given you, how many know people will find out who you are, no matter if you're in jail, no matter if you're a truck driver, no matter if you're working as a janitor, how many know the gifts of God, they will shine throughout wherever season you are. So he ended up interpreting the dreams of the king and the king made him his right hand man. Imagine going from jail to the, to the Pharaoh's right hand man just like that but that's what happened with joseph and and later on his brothers that sold him into slavery they came to egypt because there was a famine in the land they came to egypt and joseph was able to forgive his brothers we're going to read just a little bit of this story in genesis 45 verse 4 imagine if your brothers sold you into slavery Imagine if your family beat you to death, you would probably hold grudges, you would probably never want to see him again, or you would probably want revenge. But I love what Joseph does. He says this, he says, please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer and he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. 
but don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. The famine that, was, that has ravaged the land for two years will last five more years, and there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. Says God sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and to preserve many survivors. So it was God who sent me here, not you. And he is the one who made me an advisor to Pharaoh, the manager of the entire palace and the governor of all Egypt. So in this story, Joseph went from nothing to something. Amen. How many know God has turned a lot of our lives from nothing into something? And he had the perfect opportunity. He was in charge of all of the food. He was Pharaoh's right-hand man. He could have easily got revenge on his brothers. But Joseph said, you know what? It wasn't you that sent me here. It was God that sent me here. How many know sometimes we go through some trials and we try to blame everyone else. We try to blame our families. We try to blame our friends. When in reality, God is saying, I'm just testing you because I'm ready to provide for your family in a future distance. Amen. Joseph went through some struggles, but the struggles he went through were to save his family in the long run. Amen. How many know if Joseph would have just stayed where he was at, he would have never seen his dreams come true? How many know if God can't trust you in your trials, how many know how, how is he going to trust you in the palace? And I love what Joseph did. He, he forgave his brothers. He, he, he cried. He said he cried uncontrollably when his brothers came. And when he found out his father was alive and his little brother was alive, he was so overwhelmed with joy. And that's what God is saying. He said, it don't matter if you've been through some hard times with your family. It don't matter if you've been through some stress in your family. It don't matter if you've been through some pain in your family. God says, I'm giving you an overwhelming joy of restoration in this season. He says that, that, that let go of the things that hinder you. Let go of them silly arguments. Let go of them disputes. Let go of them things that are not of God. Because this is a season of restoration. Amen. Are you with me, church? I hope y'all hear me. I know we're out here in the middle of the streets. It's all good, though. We're going to read in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 through 15 today. We're going to break that down. We're going to close out. But I believe that this is the call that God has called us to do. Amen. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, it says, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, how many know God chose us? You must clothe yourself, clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's fault and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. And always be thankful. So I'm going to break this down in certain parts. The beginning of the scripture says, clothe yourself with, with all these things. Clothe yourself with love. Clothe, clothe yourself with righteousness. Clothe yourself with mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So every day we go out, we need to clothe ourselves with the things of God. Amen. Which means when you put on clothes, you're putting on something. So every morning we're putting on gentleness. We're putting on patience. We're putting on kindness. We're putting on self-control. We're putting on the fruits of the spirit. So when we go about our days, it's hard to be bitter when you're full of joy. It's hard to be angry when you're full of love. It's hard to have a grudge when you're full of forgiveness. Come on, somebody. So as a church, the first thing we need to do every day is clothe ourselves with the things of God. As we keep reading the scripture, it says to make allowance for each other's faults. And as a church, if we want um, restoration in the body of Christ and in our families, we have to make allowance for each other's faults. Because as Christians, sometimes we get so judgmental. Amen. I don't know if you guys have been there, but we've got judgmental as a church at times where, oh, they've wronged me. They're supposed to be a Christian, but they're out there smoking cigarettes. They're supposed to be a Christian, but I seen them cussing on Facebook. They're supposed to be this perfect person, when in reality, the only perfect person in this world, ever to walk this world, was Jesus Christ. All of us make failures. All of us make our faults. All of us ha have our own walk with the Lord. So God is saying, make allowance for each other's faults. Amen. And I believe that God is saying in this season that everything that, that we go through, if we want God to forgive us, how are we not going to forgive others for messing up? Amen. God is saying, this is a season of love. It says there was no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. The only people that put condemnation on other Christians usually are the Christians themselves. And that's got to change. Amen. If we want restoration in our families, in our cities, and our, and our, 
and our, and our loved ones in our church and the body of Christ, we need to make sure that we are making allowance for others' faults. That doesn't mean we give them permission to sin. That doesn't mean we give them permission to keep messing up. But there is a big difference between telling someone, how dare you fail? How dare you mess up and pointing fingers instead of saying, you know what? There's a better way. Let me walk you into this with love. And that's what I want to be as, as a church that helps people get up when they fall. That helps people get back up when they fall. It says the righteous fall seven times, but they keep getting up. And we got to be a church that makes allowance for each other's faults. And then, because I'm not perfect, I thank you for the leaders. I thank you for family members that when I messed up, they loved me back into the presence of God. Come on, somebody. The next part of the scripture says, forgive anyone who offends you. That's a hard one, right? Forgive anyone who offends you. In Luke 17, verse 1, it said, it is impossible that no, no offenses should come. So we live in a sinful world. We live in a fallen world. We live in a world that is messed up. We live in a world full of drugs. We live in a world full of haters. We live in a world full of people that backstab us, right? And it is impossible that no offenses may come. But God says here, forgive anyone who offends you. And I believe the reason that God is telling us in this season to forgive those that offend us is because offense is a trick of the, of the devil, right? If you read the book Beta Satan by John, John Bevere, I encourage you to read that. It's such an eye-opening book to explain the power of offense in your life because offense, it starts as something small, right? Like we get offended. I can't believe that pastor didn't wave at me. And later on, we start to get more offended and it starts to build and it starts to grow. And a little offense starts to take root inside of our lives. And the thing about offense that is different from other sins is it's a sin that we cause on ourselves. We allow ourselves to be offended. We allow ourselves to go through trials. We allow ourselves when the person who might have done the offending ain't even thinking about us. So that's why it's so important to forgive those who, who offend you. Amen. God is saying in this season that offense is, is a killer in our walk with God. If we're walking around with offense, if we're walking around with sin, if we're walking around with bitterness in our hearts, how can we be free? Amen. God is saying, forgive those who offend you. Forgive those who offend you. And the way to do that is to be mindful of him. Like we said, the way to do that is to clothe yourself in righteousness. If we're walking with the will of God, how many know if someone offends us, we could slide it apart and say, you know what? They, they talk bad about me because they talk bad about my father. They, they persecute me because they persecuted my father. We start to see life differently when we put on the things of God. The next thing the Bible in the scripture says, forgive others as the Lord forgave you. Forgive others as the Lord forgave you. This is, this, is, this is how I live my life every day, is to forgive others for wronging me, forgive others for all this stuff that has happened to me because God forgave me, amen. I was a sinner, I was in jail, I was lustful, I was an adulterer, I was a cheater, I was a man addicted to pornography, I was a man that said I was this, but really in, the, in secret, I was doing something else. I was a man that was lost and bound and hurt and tied up to my sin, and God still came into my life, amen. I was, I was preaching at, um, at Lyft, the young adults, the other day, and I was telling them a story that in the middle of my trials, in the middle of my lust, in the middle of my sin, in the middle of my season, God sent angels to protect me. And I went to three different places, and three random people that I've never met before in my life came up to me and said, I don't know who you are, I don't know what you're struggling with, I don't know how who, who your walk with God is, but there was a giant angel providing for you and protecting you. And then I went like two weeks later and it happened again. And two weeks later it happened again. Three times God sent someone just to tell me that he sent his warring angels to protect me in the middle of my lust, in the middle of my sin. God forgave me when I didn't deserve forgiving. So how dare we as Christians not forgive others? Amen. Just a couple more. It says, clothe yourself in love which binds us together in perfect harmony. In 1 Peter 4, 8, it says, most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. And I believe that as we pray for people, that is the glue that binds us together. 
Because you don't pray for people unless you have some kind of love for them, right? I think about times in, our, in, in my personal family's life when I fought with my brothers or I fought with my sister or my mom and dad got on my nerves or whatever happened and, and like any situation that has ever came, like we could have broken off, but I believe that the power of prayer binds us together. The power of love binds us together because it says love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. The God's love when he died for us covered the whole world of sin. It covered everything that ever happened, everything that ever will happen. His love was so strong, it covered a multitude of sins. So when we're loving on our brothers and sisters, we can love them through pornography. We can love them through addiction. We can love them through a, a, abuse. We can love them through things that the world wouldn't love them. But as Christians, we love them through them trials. Come on, somebody. It binds us together in perfect harmony. Amen. So whatever, we, we can overlook some things. We can look over some people's faults. We can say they might not be the best pastor. They might not be the best worshiper. They might not be the best at this. But I'm going to love them through it. Because that's what the Bible says. And as we love them through it, we start to see the things that they are are good at we start to see the things that they do strive at we start to see the good amen i believe this is one of the best qualities that god has instilled in me that i see the good in people's hearts like i see man man you guys are awesome you guys are going to be awesome worship team one day you are awesome preachers one day you are an awesome evangelist one day and god has allowed me to the opportunity to see others through the eyes of christ and i believe that's what binds us together where we're not so much focused on their flaws but we're focused on what god has for them amen two more things it says we're called to live in peace we're called to live in peace God doesn't want us to live in stress. He doesn't want us to live in death. He doesn't want us to live in anxiety. He don't want us to live in depression. He don't want us to live in hurt. He don't want us to live in pain. He called us to live in peace. And if we have bitterness in our heart, if we have unforgiveness in our heart, if we have doubt in our heart, if we have suicide, if we have anything in our heart, we are not gonna be able to live with peace. So God is saying, restore yourself restore your family restore your freedom restore things that have been taken away from you because you won't get peace while you're holding on forgiveness in your heart amen as i've grown up in life i learned to strive for peace more than anything in my life there's times when people fight and i hate it because it's taking my peace that i just want peace like i'd rather say i'm sorry than, than lose my peace amen i hope that's a cry of our church this morning the last thing in the scripture it says, and always be thankful. Thankful for everything. In this season of Thanksgiving, in the season of, of everything, Christmas and all the stuff, we're thankful that God brought his son, but we're thankful for everything as believers. We're thankful that God has brought us out of the miry clay and put us into light, amen. We're thankful that we're no longer bound to sin. We're thankful for these things. And God is saying, if we want to be a church where families get back together, where marriages are reunited, where kids start, start being with their families. We have to be a thankful church, thankful for every blessing, thankful for everything that God has done for us. Amen. In Joel chapter 2, verse 25, that says this, I will give you back what you lost to the swarming locust, the hopping locust, the stripping locust, and the cutting locust. God is saying in this season, the devil has done a lot of stuff to us. We put ourselves in some situations too. It says there's been a lot of turmoil. There's been a lot of darkness. There's been a lot of doubt. There's been a lot of hurts. There's been a lot of things. But he says, I will give you back what you lost to them swarming locusts. I will give you back what you lost to them hopping locusts. I will give you back what you lost to them stripping locusts and them cutting locusts. It was I who sent this great destroying army against you. So God is saying, everything that you've been through, everything that you've gone through, he says, I've been there with you. He says, I'm about to give you back an anointing for your faithfulness. Amen. God, sometimes he has to test us in order to give us what we want. The Bible says, if you're faithful with a little, you'll be faithful for much. Amen. God can't trust some of us because we don't even know how to tithe off $100 yet, yet less a million dollars. But God is saying, I'm ready to restore everything in your life in this season. And I believe that because 2020 has been a year of stress. 2020 has been a year of destruction. 2020 has been a year where it's been so hard. People have lost jobs, people have lost finances. People have to really rely on God. And God said, if you're relying on me, 
I will get you through this season. I will give you back what you lost in them storms. I will give you back what you lost. And God is saying exceedingly abundantly more than we could ask, think, hope, or even imagine. So just because you lost a lot doesn't mean that God doesn't have a lot. Amen. He owns cattle on a thousand hills. So my prayer for this church as we go out today is that we forgive each other. We make amends with each other. Call me. Call that person. Call that family member you haven't talked to in a long time. Make, make room for restoration in your life. Because how many know that things that we went through, it might have just been for the benefit of, of this moment right now. Joseph knew that. Everything that he went through, every trial, every storm, every situation, jail cells, prison, getting accused of some crazy stuff, all that represented for this moment right now when he was able to support his family. And God is saying, you've been through a lot, church. You've been through a lot, but you, you've seen God move through a lot. And that's my cry for the church is restore yourself with your family. Restore yourself with the church, the body of Christ. We don't want to don't want to lose one single member from unforgiveness. Amen. So we bind the spirit of unforgiveness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this message. We bind the spirit of unforgiveness. We bind the spirit of bitterness. We bind the spirit of offense, Lord God. It shall not stand in this church. It shall not stand in this city. It shall not stand on this town, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for giving us peace, Lord God. Let us clothe ourselves with righteousness. Let us clothe ourselves with love, Lord God. I pray that every single person watching this, Lord God, will get to know you in a new and a powerful way, Lord God. That they will dig into these scriptures. They will dig into this word. They will dig into your anointing, Lord God. You are everything. And we thank you, our provider, Lord God. We worship you in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone says, amen. Love you, church. We'll see you in person next week. Amen. Can't wait. We're coming out of anointed service today. And it was good to see how God moved in a mighty way, talking about the lives that can be changed and restored. You know, it, it, this season has been a hard season for a lot of people because of COVID. Like so many other things sometimes bring us down, heartache, hurts from one another, unforgiveness. You know, these things kind of draw us away from God, but God is always in the restoration and he's always coming to bring our family back together. Just like in the lives of Joseph, he, he came back and he, even though he went through some very hard times, getting thrown in the pit, getting taken to Potiphar's house, going through so many trials and different things in his life, how God put him in the perfect position to restore his family. And when the family came, they came and his brothers came looking for food in Egypt and they found him there and uh, they didn't know it was him, but he was gracious for to his brothers and he loved them so much and he wanted to bless them. So he, he, he had the means to help them and he restored his family because of what God had told him in his life. And God's promises are, are yes and amen. And you know, today we thank you for all God is doing in, in the lives of people and how he's restoring lives. We also want to bless each and every one of you, Lord, during this, during this season. Bless each and every family, each and every home, God. Make, let your presence be known to them, Lord. Let them call upon you in times of need, Lord. Restore families, restore the things that the enemy has tried to still in our lives, Lord. Help them to be restored back unto you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray today. We ask, Lord, that you would just put a special blessing on those that are sick today, that you would heal them, God. Those that have needs, Lord, that you would just touch them for their needs, Lord, if they need a a spiritual blessing or a money blessing God or if they need something in their life Lord we just ask you say cast your cares upon me for you care for us Lord so we just pray today Lord that right now that your blessings would go forth that your Holy Spirit would go forth that you would touch the lives and hearts of people Lord change them set them free and let them know about the mercies of God in Christ and how he will restore a family that has been broken torn down and divided and how he will bring it back to life with his mercy and his love. And in Jesus' name we pray.